For this video, guys, it's going to be a little bit different. You could easily just shut the video off and just listen to the audio on this as I'm going to read a story. This is a story that my buddy Nathan wrote. Nathan was the gentleman I stood next to waiting in line for an obscene amount of time to pick up one of these moon swatches in Las Vegas. So let's start off and let's read his story. I'm going to read this part of the story and then we're going to jump to some uh, pictures and video and I'll try to read over those. Hopefully I can make this happen. But this story is titled Anatomy of an Omega plus Swatch Speedmaster Moon Swatch Purchase. So finding out like many of us, I'm just going to read it. It was Thursday, 24 March of 2022 when I saw the Moon Swatch on the Revolution Magazine Instagram for the first time. I saw a video of Wyco at the Swatch Factory in Switzerland and I didn't really know what it was all about. That's when they popped open a little blue suitcase at the table and unveiled the Moon Swatch for the first time. At first I was just very confused as to what was going on and I realized that it was actually a Swatch Speedmaster. My mind was blown. At first I thought it was like other watch releases where they show you a prototype and six months down the road you maybe have an opportunity to buy one. But then they announced that they would be released at select swatch stores across the world in just two days. But in my head, I was still thinking, oh, that's great. Who wants to buy a $3,000 swatch? And that's when they announced that they would be sold for $260. After picking my jaw up off the floor, I started to fully realize the magnitude of what was happening. I have a modest collection of mostly micro brands and no real luxury watches, Admittedly, Omega Speedmaster was nowhere in my radar because they were $7,000. A $260 price tag had me interested in learning more. I scoured the YouTube videos and started dropping that started dropping instantly to try to learn more about this announcement. One bit of information I found out that I couldn't believe is the dimensions of this watch were going to be a one-to-one -one identical to the actual Speedmaster dimensions. It all felt a bit crazy and then I watched a video that explained the situation like this. Right now, anybody can walk into an Omega boutique and purchase a Speedmaster, but these moon swatches were only going to be sold at select boutiques and it's believed that the, that the supplies are limited. Ultimately, making one of these little swatches more exclusive than an Omega Speedmaster and for only $260. I thought, holy shit, this is going to break the world and I want to be part of it. I went to the Omega website and clicked on the authorized store information. After my first glance of the authorized stores, it appeared that the closest store to me was going to be San Francisco. I coordinated with the wife to pack her bags for our road trip this weekend. However, I continued watching videos as they popped up and one that changed my plans was a live stream from the YouTuber Random Rob. Hey, that's me, name dropper. He said he was packing his bags and flying to Las Vegas for the Moon Swatch release. I had not initially seen Las Vegas on the Swatch site, but when I went back to look, there it was. A five hour drive to Las Vegas is much better than a 15 hour drive to San Francisco. The only problem was that my wife was not going to spend the night on the street in Vegas. Not sure how San Francisco streets are better, but now I was going solo, which meant I was only going to be able to get two watches. Nevertheless, I packed my backpack accordingly. Backpack included small fold-up chair, jacket, winter hat, change of clothes, phone charger, toothbrush, and paste, 12 granola bars, pretzels, large bottle of water, cash, and an extra watch just for fun. I first heard of these moon swatches approximately 8 a.m. and by the end of the day, my bag was packed and I was ready to go. Now this portion of the um, story, I'm just gonna kind of exclude. It basically covers like, uh, you know, how he was trying to prepare for the trip and then the overall journey to the trip. So I'm gonna fast forward through that part and then I'm gonna go to the first impressions and uh, I will try to do that as a voiceover over the um, pictures and everything. So stay tuned for that, or well, you're not going to, it's just going to keep going. I made my way through the casino, which was loud, colorful, smoky, exciting, and slightly depressing as I remember them to be. And there it was. In the back next to the Hershey store, I spotted the unique little red square with a cross with identified my desti destination, the Swatch store. 
I was immediately relieved to see that nobody was queued outside the store. I also saw Omega Swatch Banner hanging from the ceiling with iconic blue suitcase full of watches sitting beneath it in the glass cube. I immediately walked over to the to make first contact with these beauties. My first impression was, wow, there they are. They're real. They're real. Although I wanted to just sit there and take a closer look, I couldn't because in the back of my mind, I was thinking, what do I need to do to get in line so I actually get two of these? I walked in the store and pretended like I was looking around and trying not to look too eager to inquire about the moon swatches. Eventually, I casually made my way over to a sales associate and asked, so what's the situation on the moon swatches? The manager immediately let me know that there would only be one watch per person because of issues that had already happened in other stores. At this moment, I was gutted. I knew there was nothing I could that I was going to say that was going to change the situation, so I swallowed hard and said thank you. Little did I know that the this unfortunate bit of information was about to be overshadowed by the next bombshell. Thinking I was overprepared, I confidently asked him where I could start the line to wait for tomorrow's opening. He calmly let me know that the line had already been started out front. Out front? I looked outside and already seen people sitting in folding chairs waiting and I panicked. I, th I thanked the manager and made a beeline for my car. I grabbed the bag and extra water briskly, walked back to the store not having any idea how many people had are already there. I walked out front to find a bunch of little divider things like you find at airports that snake people back and forth in lines. To my relief... There was only about 35 people in front of me. I could finally relax. I had made it. Time in line. As I found my place in line, I was confident that I could be self-sustained for a long period of time. I pulled my tiny chair out of my backpack, put it together. This was home for the night. Those of us just arriving looked a bit bewildered. Fortunately, Tristan, the Swatch Store manager, manager came out and gave the new arrivals briefings. He had us tighten up our chairs and briefed us that if we left for more than a short period of time, we would be removed from the line. He also said that they were not allowed to hold spaces for anybody and the photos were being taken to know who was not who was it or wasn't in line. This was all followed by his friendly question of asking anybody if they needed some water. I did not. I started chatting with the gentleman in front of me. He was a YouTuber from Wet Watches. He let me know that there was one more person from his group on his way who who also has a YouTuber, is also a YouTuber. I asked if it was Random Rob, and sure enough, it was. I thought it would be cool to maybe see him, and now I'm going to be sat next to him in line for 20 hours. This was shaping up to be quite the adventure. Rob showed up and handed me one of his Random Rob poker chips. I found this to be quite fitting for Vegas. We all made small talk as we got to know each other. We tried to figure out who the watch people were and who weren't. We decided that the ratio appeared to be about 50-50, flippers to collectors overall. There was an entire family in front of us that did not really look like they were into watches. Only one guy was wearing a watch and the rest appeared to be... Okay, back to the paper. So beyond that, there were a bunch of watch geeks. I mean, enthusiasts. Meeting everyone was pretty cool. We all did wrist checks as we got to know each other. We chatted about which moon swatch we were going to try to get as we watched the line slowly grow behind us. Tristan would come out occasionally to offer us water and update us on any new ways they had come up with to control the line. He let us know that in the morning an employee would be assigned to each person as they came through the door. He also mentioned that he could not disclose how many watches they had, but he did let us know that it was more than 200 and less than 500. He then identified some seats that hadn't been occupied, and after 30 minutes he pulled the seats from the queue. It was fun watching his power grow throughout the night. He really started to realize that he was the one calling the shots. Fortunately, he used his power for good and didn't overstep any boundaries that would ultimately cause chaos. The Swatch store stayed open till midnight and Tristan assured us he would open at 8 a.m. to start working our purchases. By this time, everybody was settled in and made friends with each other. A long night. It was fun watching all the interesting people of Vegas walk by. So many people would walk by, look at us sitting there, look up at the Swatch sign, and then walk away with confused look on their face. Some inquisitive folks came over to see what it was all about. We had a very enthusiastic camper at the edge of the line tape. He was happy to entertain their questions and let all the ladies know how good they looked. 
As the night wore on, he watched. we watched the line grow. We were thinking back to the 200 to 500 number and number and start at wondering how many watches they really had. One of our campers had his laptop out and was online constantly updating us with information from Reddit. He was getting play-by-play -play information on what was happening at all the other releases across the world. Videos were coming out on Instagram and YouTube and we were sharing them with each other. We seemed confident that there was a little chance of a we seemed confident that there was little chance of uprising in Vegas, but we knew anything could happen at any time. There was always the ever-present question of which watch are you going for? We would try to guess the total number of watches and divide by 11 and count the number of people in front of us to see what our chances were of getting the one we wanted. The only problem was that there was another variable. Earlier, someone from the Swatch team had mentioned there was fewer of the light-colored watches than the darker watches. This further threw off our already imaginary numbers. By midnight, the queue had broken out of the uh, corridor off areas and was, started, was starting to wrap around into the sidewalk by the street. We really couldn't see where the line ended. At 5 a.m., I walked to the end of the line, shot a video. At that time, there was about 400 people and started growing rapidly from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. Our buddy with the computer was finding out the number of watches available from stores on the East Coast and onward. As the time zone came closer to our opening, the numbers were very, the numbers were very small. For instance, Pennsylvania had only 35 and 50 watches. Stores that were reporting big numbers only had 100. We were starting to question if the 200 to 500 was uh, actually accurate. Time to buy. As the sun came up, Tristan came back. It was then that we learned how this whole line thing was going to get figured out. They finally announced that they had 278 watches. Before the store opened, each person was going to get a ticket with a number on it. That ticket was your ability to buy one watch, and if you lose your ticket, you get no watch. This solved two problems. One, after the tickets were handed out, nobody could jump in line. Two, it also let the people standing in line know who the last person was. Before handing out the numbers, there was a problem. Tristan found a small group of people in line that had jumped in. He refused to open the store until they left the line. Things got a little heated and there was some shouting. This immediately got the attention of three officers on bicycles. They came over and the situation was resolved. We were all a bit scared that we had waited all this time for nothing and the store would not open like some of the other stores had done. They finally started letting people in and we were all relieved. There was a lot of concerned people when the gentleman that had brought his entire family all came out with the Mission to Uranus watches. It was supposedly the most sought after because we had talked to everyone in line, we knew Uranus wasn't the only watch people were after. With my number 37 ticket, I was confident I would get the watch I wanted. Initially, I wanted the Saturn going into the shop. Looking at it in hand, the strap seemed a bit sparkly, and that same moment of disappointment, I overheard an employee mention that there was only one Uranus left. It was, at that, it was at that moment that I felt like I was in some sort of video game and had the opportunity to save the princess, win the game, and live happily ever after. I seized the moment and said, I will take it. Checking out was like the greatest feeling in the world. Dopamine was pumping through my system as I was watching the little light blue box being placed in my bag. I felt like I was stealing it for $260, and it felt great. I said... Quick goodbye as I rushed out to my car with my little treasure. I was halfway home when it really sunk in that I had purchased a watch I would never wear. I knew it when I was buying it, but got caught up in the moment. I saw the most popular intersected with the opportunity and reacted. The rest of the ride home, I just reflected on all the great watches in my box and how happy I am to have them. I knew I was going to have to sell this watch and I wanted to reflect on this whole situation. In doing so, I've realized that great adventure this has been. I'm happy to have met so many wonderful people and had the chance to experience all of these amazing feelings. 
I know this sounds cheesy, but I'm truly happy to share my story with the new owner of this great little watch. I hope this story carries on as you make your own stories with this little piece. Crazy Omega swatch drop that happened in 2022. So I know long video. I ended up with that watch. So Nathan actually sold the watch on eBay for like 1500 bucks or something like that. Buyer flake, never paid. So uh, we exchanged numbers and I've been texting him pretty regularly. Uh, we made a deal. I ended up with the watch and then I sold it um, at basically a loss from what I had into it to another buddy. So that's the story of how we get these moon swatches. They're a little easier to get now, but still pretty dang rare. Thanks for watching or listening.